Okay, so what really is online instruction? So the idea is that we want to exploit the power of the online medium. It's a new medium. It gives us different affordances. It gives us different ways of communicating. And while we miss the ways that we already had in the face-to-face -face medium, we have to go for this online new medium and exploit it for promoting effective student learning. So how do we do that? So what does online instruction involve? Okay, so online instruction involves making the course materials available for asynchronous access, giving immediate practice activities and timely feedback to students, conducting synchronous meetings to address queries and doing tutorials, and providing a forum for learners to discuss the content. So this is a very basic definition of what is involved in online instruction. There are many other you know, more advanced uh, ways of doing the online instruction also, which we can we will come to later. OK, so now that we have you have been listening to me for a while, here is an activity for you to do. Okay? So the question is, how comfortable are you with having to do online instruction? Okay? Choose the option that best describes you. And this time, there's no need to type it in the chat. So there's no need to disclose your choice. Just choose and say that, OK, I am comfortable. I am my choice is one. You know, I already do all this, use Moodle lessons have discussions on Piazza or you can say that, okay, I think I can manage, you know, I've done a fair amount of thing. I just need to pick up some concepts and maybe some tools and I should be able to go. Or you can say that, look, I've not done any of this and uh, I'm feeling a little bit daunted. So pick the option that best describes you. I'll give you 10 seconds. Okay. So let me move on since everybody has picked it up and it's just still coming up in the chat. So uh, <clears throat> let's see what these options indicate. Okay, so if you choose option one, which basically says that, okay, you're comfortable. Okay, when you move to online, I mean, the course website that we have created, it is sufficient if you just read the conceptual parts of that course website and you can take your own decisions about which tool you want to use. Okay. The second thing is if you think you can manage, So then go through the course in some detail. Okay, so there's a lot of detail, both in terms of concepts and technology tools. I'll be doing a walkthrough of the course website in a while and note the recommendations. We made a whole lot of recommendations, points to keep in mind, and you can do what works for you. And now coming to the third one, I see that many people have chosen option three. Okay, what happens for these guys? Okay, so the point here is don't panic. Just go through the conceptual parts that is easy to get. And as teachers who have been doing this for a long time, these many of these conceptual parts, we may already be practicing in our own face to face classes. Now it's a matter of moving those things to the online practice. So for the technology part, your TAs, there is the CDEEP staff and there are other colleagues who are you know, experts on the different technologies that we are using. They're all there to help you with the technology part. So it's not really that difficult to move to a basic online teaching level. Okay, so let me pause here for getting some feedback. Okay, in a face-to-face -face class, you know, typically I would pause here and say, okay, is this making sense? And then you look around the class and you say, okay, you no, know, those guys are sleeping and these guys are, you know, have blank faces and those guys seem excited. So now that is a feedback that you don't have in the online medium. So the way to get that feed, feedback is to explicitly seek it. Like what I'm doing now, you pause here and you ask the question, okay, is this talk making sense so far? So you can just type yes or no in the chat window. 